All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, good morning, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, scheduled demo session for RAC course. Right, uh, today and tomorrow are going to be two uh, demo sessions, which are publicly available. Uh, anyone can join and participate and you know, have an interaction on these demo sessions and clarify your whatever the questions, queries. So what I'm going to talk about today, a brief update about this course curriculum, course content, course timing, fee structure, and some of the, the basics, foundations or basic architecture, networking, and the file system, and some core fundamental concept for the Rack database or the rack architecture and if needed then we'll talk about some certifications and other stuff all right so during this uh, demo this demo session today and tomorrow uh, if you have any questions or queries uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions over here or if you're unable to ask your questions you can use this zoom chat here you can post your questions i'll be taking a look on those questions and i'll answer to your queries right so with that uh, i'm gonna just uh, very first thing i'm gonna cover the introduction about me and followed by i'm gonna talk about the course curriculum, what is contained in this particular course. And followed by, I'm going to talk about what is the course duration, score timing, and the fee structure and other things. And followed by, we'll talk about or Google Drive access and then WhatsApp group and some the concept around rack architecture, networking and few other stuffs what we're going to talk about. And if needed then we'll talk about certifications and some foundations all those things. Right. So with that, I can quickly cover about myself. I'm your instructor. Uh, I'll be the one who conducting this entire RAC course. Uh, there's no third person involved in that or there's no the any other institute or vendor who is going to teach this. It is me who will be teaching and covering this entire course. So coming to me, I'll be having overall 15 to 16 years of IT experience as a Oracle domain expert. So I started my career after my graduation and I started with a junior Oracle DBA and followed by senior Oracle DBA and lead administrator and infrastructure lead and solution architect. So various roles I have handled in this 15 to 16 years of my IT career experience. With this overall experience, I worked for uh, various organizations and various sectors like finance, insurance, and e-commerce. And out of this, my overall experience, the I got a chance to work on various projects and various implementations. Majority of the projects are implementation the work, what I've done, what I feel to say, one is uh, the entire data center build from the scratch for one of the insurance sector and other major project was uh, migrating their data center from one location to another location. New Jersey to Washington DC. So those are two major product projects what I handled. 
on top of that there are so many other day to day operations i have done a thousands of database upgradation database migration rack implementation data guard setup and data migration from on premises to cloud those are my other major work what i accomplished but i would like to talk about those data center migration or data center build as a major challenge and major work implementation with a minimal downtime so that was the longest project what i handled and proudly say that those are the successful completion in my career right so with this 15 years of my it career experience i was fascinated about oracle products and i got a chance to learn many oracle products and i got a chance to work with many clients many customers and got a chance to understand their environment and then support them in a various manner meaning that i started with oracle db senior oracle dba rack expert data guard expert golden gate expert and those are the specialties with me database rack golden gate data guard so those are my day to day activities that support for any client and on top of that i got a chance to work on various oracle products like oracle ebs oracle obi oracle soa and oracle exadata oracle supercluster oracle excel logic oracle oda machine oracle jdlra oracle gf storage so those are other engineering system i supported and worked for many clients and customers and also i have not limited my knowledge to only oracle domain because oracle is my primary skills and i wanted to be in oracle domain i learned almost all their oracle products and i was up to date in the market i enhanced my skills but i have not limited to this oracle field or oracle world i also extended my knowledge based upon customer need or the client need i also learned other database technologies like ibm db2 sap hana and postgresql mysql and so many other database products and i also supported for those databases for many clients right so that is my overall journey so far and most commonly i used to get two common questions from many of my old student and even in my circle the one is is the cloud technologies are going to be impacting dba roles or dba job that's one common topic everyone will discuss and the other common topic is is dba good to learn devops skills right those are the common questions will will be discussed or asked by any anyone or will be discussed in your group circle so the first question i'll take it is the devops skills helpful or is the devops skills is mandatory for dbs so i say devops skills is not necessary for dbs but if you have a intention or your willingness to learn the devops technologies i'll highly recommend to go out and then learn a few of the devops concept so that you can use these devops concept and make your day to day tasks and make them automation make them automate so what all you are going to learn in devops various scripting various tools various technologies you are you are going to learn in devops and those all are not necessary for dbs so what is needed even myself considering i also went ahead and then learned few of the devops skills like i learned terraform i learned ansible i learned kubernetes i learned cookbooks and chefs and i learned uh, many other skills like python perl scripting and self scripting so these all part of your devops and then with help of this ansible especially i was able to do this patching i was able to do this upgradation hundreds and thousands of databases automatically with one single script right and then i learned this python scripting and self scripting and perl scripting with help of this uh, scripting i can write hundreds of oracle monitoring scripts like oracle 
database growth oracle production and dr sync oracle database file system structure growth oracle asm disk group monetization is there any oracle blocking session locking session is there any long running session inside my database is there any invalid indexes inside my database is there any fragmentation in my table fragmentation in my database is there any fragmentation in my index all these activities i can do automate i can write python script i can write a cell script i can write any of that and then i can schedule it in a cron job so rather than me daily checking these activities which is going to time consuming which is going to take 2 to 3 hours other than that i can write all this automation script and then i have schedule them in a cron job using any of this python scripting perl scripting or cell scripting right so learning devops is not a mandatory for dba but it's interested to you it is subjected to your interest if you are interested willing to learn go ahead and then explore on that so that's going to help you for your day to day activities automation and then that's going to give you relief but that is about the devops technologies coming to this cloud of course cloud technologies will not replace the dba job dba job is forever and with this cloud technologies there will be more and more job opportunities for dbas and the only the drawback or only mandatory things with this cloud technologies you have to learn some networking concept and some storage concept when it comes to cloud because whatever database you are going to create it will be on the cloud and which will be require you to understand various networking concept your gateways your net your vlans your subnets your uh, vnc's vpns and virtualization so you have to learn some networking terms and networking understanding so that you can easily understand the architecture how the database is installed and also whatever database you're going to store it or create on the cloud that needs you to understand the storage technologies in the cloud so you have archival tier you have a cold tier hot tier and you have you know block storage you have archive storage and whatever database backup restore recovery you're going to do it will be on any of the storage and your database will be of any of these storages so you have to expand and you have to learn different storage concepts especially in the cloud so those are a uh, few things you need to learn and once you learn remaining whatever day to day activities a dba used to do it rman backup restore recovery performance tuning export import user monitoring user creation user administration user privileges user permissions and your table space growth your database indexes your database objects and whatever the day to day activities whatever the admin activities what we used to do it on premises remain same in the cloud as well so there is no way cloud technologies will replace the dba job but rather cloud technologies will help dba to get a more opportunities because many customers are now willing to adopt cloud technologies migrate their databases from on premises to cloud right with that by adopting this cloud technologies few of the activities are like automated like for example a dba we used to do lot of manual pre work for the database integration but whereas in cloud you no need to do all that just provision the servers and all the prerequisites will be built in and just single click your database will be ready that's a few tasks are automated or few tasks will be ready made in the cloud technologies but other than that day to day operations remain same and there is no way cloud technologies are going to be replace a dba jobs all right so i'll take a pause here if anyone has any questions so far wanted to know or wanted to discuss anything on anything about me or anything on the career part or any questions around this career journey anyone has it i'm going to take a pause here if no question then i'll continue with the second point that's a course curriculum
हाय अर्जुन जी शहजाद या करेंटली आई एम वर्किंग एज ए हेड ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर इन जियो एंड आई एम लुकिंग टू चेंज माय लाइक माय प्रोफाइल फ्रॉम हडूप टू डीबीए सो हाउ इट विल हेल्प मी टू लाइक टू गेट द जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटी राइट सो प्रोबेबली यू हैव टू फर्स्ट लर्न डेटाबेस this database is a core foundation for dbs oracle dbs okay. once you learn database then you can enroll for this rack i strongly recommend not to enroll for rack for now because rack is advanced than your oracle foundation oracle database core dba so we started okay. last week core dba and also mm-hmm. you should have part of that uh You have to learn first database and then this rack course. So okay. Hadoop was the technologies which is good or booming in the market a few years back, and now yes, right. there are not that much of competition. There are not much of growth compared to mm-hmm. you know Hadoop in, in the in the in the domain Hadoop. So yeah, even actually six months uh, last six months I'm not getting the call on Hadoop. Right, right. that's correct so it was a concept it was technology came in and then you know it was slowly you know scaled down or slowly you know got into that uh, not up to that market mm-hmm. so if you want to change the career to oracle domain then that's a good choice so because why oracle domain is a good choice you want to like you know i'm taking to only the database admin here you are a hadoop admin you want to change your career to oracle domain or in general you are a hadoop admin hadoop admin and you want to switch your career to dba domain and there are many dba domains like you know i want to go for oracle dba or ms sql dba or ibm db2 dba or like any of the database you want to learn that's a dba role you want to learn but choosing oracle is the right technique or right solution because oracle is always number one in the market compared to your database and you competitor like you know compare oracle as a database with any other database ms sql mysql postgresql sap and db2 nobody can meet the standard what oracle has grown up and why oracle has grown up because oracle is there for decades and the security vulnerability fix and the enhancement and the features and functionalities what oracle has given nobody is going to give that much of advanced security concept in any other database so in any other database installation is just one single rpm installation let's say you want to install db2 you want to install sap you want to install ms sql you want to install postgresql mysql just single rpm download and install it within few minutes it's done but oracle installation is not like that you have to first take care of hundreds of pre checks and hundreds of vulnerability fix first after that you can install it so oracle is the number one in the market and the field because of the features what they provide because of the security vulnerability fix what they provide and nobody can able to hack or nobody can able to ransomware attack for your oracle database any other database can be compromised or hackers can easily crack the database and then encrypt your database but oracle it's not that easy for any hacker or any ransomware attack to happen at oracle database so any enterprise customer the big customer let's take it amazon ebay and walmart and any of those big big customers enterprise customer always have their back end database as oracle to store their data okay. and then no other database can support like let's say in my career i never seen any other database more than 10 15 terabyte like ms sql postgresql or ibm db2 or sap and i never seen any database with a 10 terabyte or 12 terabyte max but compared to oracle oracle i have seen 
a database like two two hundred terabyte, four hundred terabyte, eight hundred terabyte, one petabyte, two petabyte. That's the database size. In the world, nobody can support one petabyte of database in any RDBMS except Oracle. All right. That's a quick answer. Like you know, good choice to move to Oracle technologies, but first learn Core DBA, and then come to Rack. Okay, Arjun, got it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. There are few questions in the uh, chat here. Can we learn Rack in five weekends? I'm going to cover that timings in a minute. Please stand by for that. What about the growth in Rack in cloud? Uh, since HA options and uh, read replicas. Okay. So again, um, it it's subjected to what cloud technologies you're going to learn. Like if you are learning AWS, AWS is again competitor for Oracle and they have come up with their own database technologies like Amazon, AWS, RDS and AWS Redshift and AWS, again, different, different database flavors provided by AWS. Similarly, Google Cloud, Azure Cloud, they have their own databases and they have their own strategies. So it is not limited for you to learn Amazon or AWS or Google Cloud or OCI. It is left to you which technologies you want to grow and choose the respective cloud vendor and learn their respective databases. If you are fascinated about in Oracle, be in Oracle, learn Oracle Cloud and do Oracle database and do Oracle Rack support. So all will be fine. If you learn other cloud technologies, AWS, then you have to learn their database technologies. Similarly, what Oracle Rack supports. So those are similar concepts over there, but nobody can beat this Rack concept, what Oracle will provide. And quick update, I can quickly take a minute here and I will show you how Oracle is doing last one year. Let's say Oracle stock price in last one year. So it was around 100 or 110. Now this Oracle has announced the multi-cloud support. Multi-cloud support meaning now customer can spin up their Oracle databases in the other cloud environment. AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. So any customer who are with Oracle, who are in Oracle Cloud, they will be willing to be in Oracle World, be in Oracle Cloud, be in Oracle Database. And any other customer who are in the other cloud technologies like AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, now they all slowly start migrating from their own databases to Oracle Cloud because now Oracle is partnering with the other cloud vendor and customer can get that Oracle database in other cloud technologies. So now Oracle has become more and more robust. And in last one or last 15 days, Oracle stock price like increased by 30%. So that is a trend what Oracle is going on. So that's that's what choosing Oracle DBA career is the right choice for any newcomers or anyone want to come to Oracle domain from non-Oracle domain. That's the best option for them. All right. With that, let's move on to the course curriculum and then we'll take a few more questions. Right. Let's quickly cover for five, 10 minutes about the course curriculum because it's very important to understand what all topics will be covered and what is not covered and then what are the timings and all. Right, so this is the course curriculum link. I'm gonna ping here in the uh, chat. You can go ahead and then refer it one more time. Right, I'm gonna ping here course curriculum. In the chat, you can take a note of that. Sorry for that, okay. Right, now let's quickly brief on what is there in this course curriculum. So let's start with this course curriculum or course content, what we're gonna cover in this course. So we'll talk about the basic clusterware understanding and the clusterware architecture. And again, this is just a few words I mentioned here. There are a lot of things to cover here. We have 
OHSD, we have CRSD, we have CSSD, CTSSD, we have GPNP profile, MDNSD. So a lot of cluster resource, cluster demons, and all those things. But we are just gonna give one or two names here. The introduction to cluster, clusterware architecture, clusterware startup sequence, OCR, OLR, voting disk. That is the basic understanding we'll we'll have it in a brief. And followed by we'll start with the installation. So we'll understand the VMs, the storage concept, and the networking in various IPs will get into when you start Oracle, Oracle Rack. Your public IPs, private IPs, CAN IPs, VIPs, and public network, private network, and your SAID disk, and your ASM disks, and then your ASM disk groups. So we'll start with the networking and disk groups, and then how we can set up this network, how we can set up your DNS, how you can do your name resolution, and how you can create a SAID disk. And once this is done, we'll start with the installation of clusterware. We'll install two node rack cluster, and we'll install two node rack Oracle home, and we'll install a two node rack database. So many people will say in different different names a cluster where a grid infrastructure ASM ASM software cluster software GI home ASM home all are one and same. So we'll explore more on that in our regular classes and we'll understand more. And then followed by we'll start with the ASM architecture ASM understanding ASM disk group ASM disk edition disk drop ASM disk group creation with the various redundancies. External redundancy, normal redundancy, high redundancy. So we'll go ahead and then explore more on that ASM architecture and ASM disk group administration. And then once your ASM disk group is full, how you can expand your disk group storage by adding a disk. Or when your disk is a faulty, disk is not good, how you can replace the disk in ASM disk group. So all this we'll understand in chapter number 9 and 10, playing around ASM disk group and rebalancing and removing and adding a disk and creating a disk group with the various redundancies. And in this chapter number 11, we'll talk about clusterware and rack database administration, SRUCTL versus CRCTL. Where is your SP file, P file, control file, read log files, data files. And then how can I add, how can I manage them? And then how can I restart my database? How can I restart my cluster? What is OHSD, what is CRSD, what is ASM, what is database, what is the hierarchy, what's the dependency. And then how can I do maintenance of this rack? How can I do maintenance of my ASM? How can I move my password file from file system to ASM, ASM to file system? How can I move my archive logs from local file system to ASM? And then ASM to local file system. Right? So I can play around that. And then in chapter number 12 is about clusterware administration. How can I manage, maintain my VIPs, scan IPs, public IPs, scan listener, local listener, grid listeners, and OCR, OLR, voting disk, all those things. And your rag database administration, your table spaces, data files, SP file, password file, read log files, archive log files. Where are they? How can I maintain and manage them? And chapter number 14 is about backups and recoveries. Your RMAN full backup, your RMAN restore recoveries, RMAN cloning, and L0, L1 backup, incremental backup, full backup. And then how can I do restore recoveries, point in time restore? How can I restore my control file? How can I restore my data file? And various technologies around RMAN. And chapter number 15 is about listeners, your ASM listener, your ASM net listener, your scan listener, remote listener, local listener, and database listener. Why these many listeners? How my database connectivity works in these many listeners? We'll explore more on that listeners, networking, and TNS. And chapter number 16 is about rack multi-tenant architecture, CDBs and PDBs. How can I do PDB clone, PDB creation? How can I create CDB? and connecting to your CDB versus PDB and installation of your PDBs and cloning of your PDBs 
and complete understanding with respect to CDBs and PDBs in RAC. And your ACFS. ACFS is a, one of the brilliant feature. ASM cluster file system. You can mount your ASM disk groups or ASM storage as a local file system. And even you can create your database on top of ACFS. How can you manage ACFS file system? You can increase the ACFS file system. You can decrease the ACFS file system. Again, decreasing is not recommended one, but you can do that increase, decrease, and you can delete, maintain, monitor your SFS file system. And in this chapter number 18, we'll talk about rack database versus rack one node database. What are the different types of databases in rack? Rack and rack database and rack one node database. What's the difference? What's the advantages? And how can relocate that rack one node database? And then patching. Patching. Again, in rack, we have a rolling patching, non-rolling patching, how, how to minimize the downtime and how to, you know, reduce the patching timing and opatch versus opatch at Oracle home patching, GI home patching, database patching and how, how to automate or optimize my patching and various scenarios across that. Chapter number 20 is your rack database upgradation various method of your database upgradation, manual method, silent method, your GUI method, your Perl scripting, cell scripting, or your 19C new feature auto upgrade. And what are the pre-checks? What are the post-checks? And how can I optimize my database upgrade method? And what are the various issues faced during upgradation? In case of upgradation failed or stuck, how can I proceed further? So we'll talk about with respect to Rack database here. Chapter number 21 is a node addition and node removal. How can I add a node? Right now I have two node rack. How can I make it a three node rack, four node rack? Or right now I have four node rack. How can I remove one of the node? Make it three node rack. How can I do this node addition and node deletion? You can do with the silent method, GUI method, and command line. And what are the pre-checks? What are the post-checks? What are the considerations I need to take a look before doing this? And chapter number 22 is converting your single instance to rack. I have already standalone database with ASM or without ASM. How can I move that to rack? How can I convert that to rack? Right, so that's a uh, overall the course content as course curriculum, what is planned. On top of that, we'll be covering resume writing and cover letter preparation. I'll give an example about my own resume and cover letter. And then we will go over that and we'll provide you what are the main points or content in your resume, how you can optimize your resume so that your resume can be shortlisted for any opening or opportunities. We'll go over my own resume and then we'll prepare the resume for everyone. And then we'll be discussing about the interview questions and answers. Each and every topic will be discussing about the expected interview questions and answers. On top of that, we have a lot of interview questions and answers are predefined or written already. So we'll go over them and then any questions we'll discuss on those or anyone had faced any interviews, questions, then we'll go over all of them. Right at the end of that, we'll be conducting the mock interview. Again, not a mandatory, it is subjected to everyone interest. Who are interested, you can go ahead and then register for this mock interview. I'll connect with them and then I will drive through other real time interview. So I'll be connecting with 30 to 40 minutes and then I'll ask uh, questions as if you are attending a real time interview. If you are making any mistakes or anything could have made better, we'll be take a note and then end of that interview, we'll be giving you that feedback so that you will be confident enough to attend any real interview with a client. Right, so that's a pretty much uh, about the course curriculum or the course content. So if anyone has any questions around this, I'm happy to take it them. Or feel free to unmute and then ask any questions around this course content if you have it. Yeah, right. hi. Yeah, hi, Malika. Good morning. Good evening. Yeah, you have clarification regarding the Oracle Rack uh, class, uh, Malik. See, if you're right. learning Oracle Rack, right? See, can you implement it in any, any one of the cloud uh, environment? Is it supported for Oracle Rack? No, only in Oracle Cloud you can do it. But in Azure, Google, other cloud under you cannot do it. 
and there are some hacks you can do it but oracle is not supporting that oracle is just now become multi cloud and only stand alone is supported for now Mm. Mm. Okay. So the reason being, and why I'm asking, right? See, nowadays the Oracle database is migrating to the cloud environment, right? That's why I just want to know, like, whether if I'm uh, studying this Oracle that environment, can I get the opportunity in the future? Right. Yeah. So that will be there in the future roadmap. That very soon it will not come up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. Right. So quickly, uh, I'll take a few more minutes to cover this, the course duration and timing. So you can go ahead and then check this upcoming batch that's going to cover uh, what is the current batch going on and then what is the upcoming batch. So this is the 28th, what we are starting the React batch now. Last week we started a database course and these are our the old classes which were which got completed last month right so again as i told today and tomorrow are the two demo sessions for this rack course so again the timing what i mentioned here it's a uh, in ist 8 30 to 10 30 two hours saturday and are sunday those two sessions same or they're different they're the different one so today i'm going to just cover about the course curriculum and content and followed by we'll be covering some basics today and tomorrow, networking, rack architecture, and some foundations. All right, so that is a timing for IST, India time zone. And there's a slight different time zone in EST. That will be 27 September to 28. That will be 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. That will be late night for them. But yeah, take a note of the time difference between EST and IST. All right, so this is the Zoom link, what we're using it for the demo sessions here. And this is the React course curriculum, what I just covered. Right, so with that, we will be starting actual course by next weekend. 5th of October, Saturday. And in EST, it will be 4th of October, Friday. And the timing is going to be 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Four hours on weekends. This particular rack course is a weekend batch. Only Saturday and Sunday we'll be conducting the classes. Next weekend onwards, next Saturday we are starting the course in IST time zone. It's 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. That will be four hours on Saturday. Again, same Sunday, 6th October, 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. Whereas in EST time zone, it will be too late for them. I'm not sure if you are willing to, you know, if you are interested to schedule on this time zone or if it's too late, then if you are still interested to join this course, uh, no worries, we'll be recording the sessions every day. So you can feel free to watch the recordings and then any questions or queries will be clarifying it uh, later in our your day timing. Right, so that is uh, in EST time zone, it will be 4th of October, 11 p.m. EST to 3 a.m. EST. It will be totally midnight for EST time zones. Right, so take a note of the timings and dates because that's very important to understand before enrolling this course. Right, so we'll be able to complete this course in five weekends. So we'll start with the fifth weekend and then followed by in five weekends, consecutive weekends, Saturday, Sundays, every weekend, four hours. So we should be able to complete. In case if we are unable to complete or we need one more extra weekend, so we are happy to take one extra weekend and then clarify any questions or queries or any topics which are left out or any extra topic need to be covered. We'll take it one or two extra weekends. But in pretty much five weekends, we should be able to complete this course, whatever, whatever we just covered the course content. Right. So coming to fee structure. So one day, four hours or four one day, hours? Four hours. Okay. Saturday, four hours and Saturday, four hours. So total eight hours week, weekend? Right. That's correct. All right. So coming to the fee structure, will be 
again of course this is a paid training the course fees will be 15k 15000 indian rupees or 185 us dollar and i think uh, we already have a couple of students and we have got a registration and then they are all part of the whatsapp group and they they might have all got a google drive access and the communication is happening on whatsapp group and then feel free to reach out to me and my whatsapp number or you can reach out to me via email or you can call me on my cell number i'm going to give you a details here in the chat window you can take a note you can call me on my cell number or whatsapp number or ping me i can share more details if you have any further questions or queries and then if you are willing to enroll for this particular course and then what's the payment mode i'll be guiding you one to one you can feel free to reach out to me on my whatsapp parcel number or my email id for further registration on the payment processing right that's about the fee structure 15000 indian rupees or 120 185 us dollar is a course fees right so this is about 19c version we'll be covering this rack course on 19c and it will be of live classes over a zoom session right so that's about the course timing course curriculum course structure and the fees and very important is the what are the minimum requirement which is very important without meeting this minimum requirement if you enroll for this course you will not be able to catch up the things so what are those so you should be having basic knowledge on windows basic knowledge on linux basic knowledge on sql you should be able to know how to log into servers you should be able to know how to write sql query in database a basics not advanced sql queries and all at least you know basic linux command cd mkdir su switch user so basic command should be handy and you should be knowing it otherwise this rack will be rack course will be very very difficult on top of that knowing basic knowledge of the database admin is very very important because rack is a advanced course on top of the database course core dba because the moment i say sp file if you don't know core fundamental basics of database and then you will end up with what is sp file you will asking the question what is sp file then we are not going to cover all this foundation like sp file control file what are read log files because that is a core foundation you should be aware of this rack will be of advanced concept on top of that core foundation so without knowing the database knowledge so rack is not a good for you so i do highly recommend not to enroll for this course if you are not a dbr you would not learn the database foundation right that is very very important and then the hardware requirement very important so we'll be setting up of the lab on every one individual laptop or the desktop you should have minimum 20 gb ram and minimum 100 to 150 ssd hard disk we'll be setting up of the lab using oracle virtual box on your own laptop or desktop if you don't have this minimum requirement then you will not be able to do a hands on lab exercise whatever i am doing it whatever i am teaching it you should be able to listen and you should be able to watch it but if you want to do the hands on you have to do the lab setup i'll be helping everyone to set up their lab but for that you should have this minimum hardware requirement all right so without that only caveat is you will not be able to do a hands on by your own all right so with that i'll move on if no questions around this course curriculum or the course content or the course duration i'll take a pause here for a minute if anyone has any questions on this yeah this is about the course curriculum and the fee structure at the time lying i'm pinging here in the chat uh, many what about like some real time scenarios will you be covering them this entire course is based upon real time so whatever the course all the topics are content are based upon day to day real time world example and all are live demonstrated here right so no worry on that so it's all based upon real time 
Malik, uh, can we include any real time issues? Like, can we simulate any issues? Can you include those things also, like in syllabus? Okay, look, each and every topic, as I told, it is not just a topic name here. So, when I was explaining about each and every topic, I'll be giving a example what is the issue you are going to face it and how you're going to come up. Let's say I talk about OCR, OLR, and voting disk. How you can take, how you can restore, how you can recover it, and how you can change your scan IPs, how you can change your scan VIPs, and how you can start and stop your scan listener. And then if your scan is not starting, what you can do? If your scan is not load balancing, what you can do? This is just a name, what we mentioned here, but whatever the concept will be covering, it will be based upon the real time and based upon few examples will be covered. So I just mentioned here, rack patching so just like not rack patching how can you update your o patch if your o patch is a lower version what you can do your patching got stuck your patching got failed what are you going to do so this is all based upon the real time but what i mentioned here is just a name of the topic but each of these topic contains or like few examples as compared them to real time world as a dba what is expected issues when you do a data patch here and I'll be giving an example. In the interview, they will ask, my data patch is taking more time. My data patch is hung. Then what you do? Can I do this data patch in online mode? The, the, the data patch needs the offline. And my data patch is taking more time. What is the reason? So we'll be explaining each and every concept in accordance with what is the real-time issues, what is the expected question in the interview. Don't worry on that. So it will be based upon complete real time. Okay, Malik. All right. So with that, I can quickly move on to a few more topics. Google Drive and WhatsApp group. And then we'll start with a few foundations or a few fundamental concepts. So the moment you register for the course, as I told, again, this is a paid a training. 15,000 is a course fees in Indian and rupees. 185 is US dollar. So feel free to reach out to me on my WhatsApp number or on my cell number or over an email. I can guide you through further payment process if you are willing to enroll or continue this course. And once you register, once you enroll for this course, you'll be getting access on the Google Drive link. So we'll be sharing the Google Drive link one, two, three, four, where in the Google Drive link, you can see all the course materials, lab exercise, PPTs, run book, workbook, and all those whatever needed for this course, all the material, whatever needed for this course. And in the link two, you'll be getting all the software, all the tools, interview questions, automation script, and some advanced materials where you can you make use of your certifications make use of your interview questions make use of your automation scripting and all so those are like some extra uh, material what you will be getting in this course along with that you'll be getting this previous batch recordings why you'll be getting the previous batch recordings because you can go and then watch the previous batch recording well in advance all the previous batch recordings so that you can be prepared well in advance and during this current batch live classes, you can interact more. You can ask more questions or queries. So you can, you'll be getting that previous batch recordings. And also everyday sessions, whatever we are conducting, that's a weekend session, Saturday, Sunday. Again, those also will be recorded and then uploaded to Google Drive. Even if you miss in the middle or you are unable to attend the class, you can go ahead and then watch those recording as well. So these materials are Google Drive. There won't be any restriction. Even you can download this material locally into your laptop. No restriction at all on that. And this material will be available for a lifetime access. No restriction on that. So you can download anytime you want it or you can refer anytime you want it. All right. So again, as I said, few students already enrolled and they're part of this course and they already got access on the Google Drive and they'll start watching the recording from last few weeks. And if they have any questions or queries, will be interacting on WhatsApp group. I have added those registered students into WhatsApp group. So that's a dedicated WhatsApp group for each batch. 
So any questions or queries or any communications will be happening through that WhatsApp group. So again, this WhatsApp group is not limited to this course. This WhatsApp group is again lifetime support where even after completion of this course, you can ask any questions or queries related to your work environment or any task you got in your organization. You need some help or you're stuck in that particular task. You can just post that question in our WhatsApp group. So anyone can help you on that. If not, you can tag me. I can connect with you and then I can help you on that. So all the communications will happen over here in this WhatsApp group. And again, if you are attending any interview and in the interview, you are unable to answer a few questions, feel free to post those questions over there. I'll be there to help you and I'll be there to, you know, answer those all questions or queries. Right, those are like for the communication, we'll be having that WhatsApp group. Again, uh, we have already added those students who are registered in that group and then all the communications are happening in that group. Right, so that is only for dedicated to registered students. All right. So I'll take a pause here for a minute. If anyone has any questions so far on the on the overall journey about me or the course curriculum, what I just covered so far, or the course timing, duration, or the fee structure. Or again, uh, if you are willing to register and want to make a payment, feel free to ping me on my WhatsApp number or cell number. I will further guide you to the registration process and the payment process. And again, Google Drive link and WhatsApp group that is only for the dedicatedly for registered students. All right, few questions on the chat. I'll be taking a look. But meantime, anyone has any questions, feel free to ask here. Uh, there's a question 16 GB RAM is enough or not? Srinivas is asking no. So 16 GB RAM is not enough as I mentioned here. Uh, where is the prerequisites here? So minimum prerequisites. I'll put it down here. So you should have minimum prerequisites of 20 GB RAM. So because we'll be setting up of two node rack and we'll be practicing node addition, node deletion, three node rack. So those all needs minimum of 20 GB RAM so that your two node rack can run without an issue. Yeah, minimum 2G, 20 GB RAM is mandatory. Without that, you will not be able to do a hands-on because you will not be able to set up a lab on your laptop or desktop. Again, please be noted, there is no any online lab facility. So it will be set up using your own virtual box on your own laptop or desktop. Right, so there is a few more questions. Can we include uh, simulating the real-time rack issues and all. Again, as I told, it's all based upon the real-time issues and real-time examples. Each and every topic will be covered with the real-time scenarios and expected interview questions. We'll be covering hundreds of thousands of interview questions, the real-time examples and each and every topics. Right, uh, there is a question here. Is it advisable to go standalone and rack training side by side? Again, so if you are a new and you're switching your career from non-DBA to DBA or from non-IT to DBA or you are coming from a college graduate or uh, your first time entering into a DBA world, so I highly recommend you to first learn database and then enroll for the RAC. But if you are already working as a DBA and you're having one year, two year, three years of experience, then no worries, you can parallelly continue for both the database course and RAC course and you will be able to manage and you will be able to catch up the things. But if you are new guys or switching your career to DBA role or non-IT background to IT background or non-DBA domain to DBA domain or non-Oracle domain to Oracle domain, first, I'll highly recommend to go for database course. Once that is done, go for RAC course. And if you are experienced already working at the DBA for one or two years, then go ahead and then enroll for both the courses. You should be able to catch up the things without any issue. All right. Those are the few questions in the chat here. Uh, let's continue. If no questions, uh, let's cover a few topics on the rack. And then let's see how it goes, how it goes. So let's say a few things. 
I'm just going to talk about track architecture in a simple definition. How a rack architecture looks like. We'll go with this this uh, rack architecture. Before this rack architecture, let's understand how your standalone database and rack database will work, and why rack is a uh, more powerful compared to your standalone. Standalone versus rack. The very first feature is HA, high availability. And the very next future for rack is your load balancing. And the very next future for the rack is your failover. So these are the three main future and one of the common questions in most of the interview, why rack? What are the advantages or what are the main feature of rack? HA high availability. High availability is meaning what? Like you know, when you are trying to connect to database, the client is trying to connect to database, and your database server goes down. Your instance crash happens. Then what happens? That's what standalone is a drawback. Like you know, client is trying to connect while connection your server went down. It's a complete downtime. Whereas in case of rack, client is trying to connect and server is down or server goes down. Don't worry. We have a HA, high availability. So connection will connect it to second node. That's where your HA will come, high availability. One server is not available. You have other server to su support incoming connection. If the new client is connecting, the new client is directly connect to second node. And again, you currently connecting, you will be connecting to third node. If one node is available, no worries. Your end user client connection is continue to work on the other existing nodes. That is your HA, high availability. Load balancing. Meaning, let's say I have a thousand users are connecting. Let's say I have thousand users are connecting. All these thousand users will go over here and those thousand users are connected to one single server. Your server is heavily loaded here. That's a lead to your server crash anytime. Whereas in case of Rack, thousand users are connected. So Oracle intelligently route those thousand connection like 300 years, 300 years, and 300 years. The load will be evenly distributed on all the cluster nodes so that you won't get any server crash or you won't see any server is getting overloaded. Server is equally utilized and load will be evenly distributed across your all the rack servers. So who can perform this one? We have something called scan. Scan is responsible for making this load balancing. Again, what is scan? and how the scan is able to do this load balancing that's a core foundation of your rack architecture rack foundation rack understanding so we're going to explain more on the scan and then how scan is going to do load balancing how scan knows about my load on a server all will be covering in our actual classes how scan intelligent enough to do a load balancing uh, give me a second All right, sorry for that. So then failover. So let's say, same example, 1000 users are connected over here on this server. If the server goes down or your instance goes down, then all these 1000 user connections are disconnected because there's no failover concept here. <clears throat> In case of rack, the same 1000 users are load balanced here. 300, 300, 300. If this instance goes down or if the server goes down, 
all these connected trained reducers will be automatically fail over like 150 here 150 here right we no need to worry client the 300 client whatever connected they no need to reconnect again their sessions will be automatically failed over to other rack cluster nodes that's a one of the beauty other features in case of rack so again failover is available in the rack how that failover will be assured we are going to do a quick demonstration on setting down one of the node how the user connection will be failed over to other node all will be demonstrated again one of the common question in the interview who is responsible for doing this failover how this failover is possible we have something called vip virtual ips and that because of virtual ips will be able to do a failover Without virtual IPs, we will not be able to do any failover. Right? So, we will understand that failover, how it works. Right? So, that is main advantages of future. And one of the common questions you can expect in the interview when it comes to rack. So, IP addresses. What are the IP addresses are needed in order to do a two node rack setup? Let's say I need to do a two node rack setup like Oracle Lab 1 and Oracle Lab 2. I need to do a two node rack setup. What are the IP addresses are needed? What are the minimum IP addresses are needed to do a two node rack setup? That's again one of the common questions in most of the interview. So here it goes. So I have a two node, node one and node two. So before I cover this node one and node two, let's say a few fundamental understandings. Like when many people will say, a GI or grid grid infrastructure or they will call it as the asm let's say gi software or asm software the gi meaning let's say it's a grid infrastructure just put it here many people will call it as a grid software or ASM software or clusterware software all these are like one and same it's just uh, their you know what name they're familiar they're gonna call it grid software or the GIS software or grid infrastructure software ASM software or clusterware software with help of this this one and same this single software with help of this software we should be able to install GI Home or we should be able to install ASM Home we should be able to install Clusterware Home so these are all one and same you call it as a GI software, ASM software, Clusterware software, GI Home, ASM Home, Clusterware Home these are all one and same based upon which word, which name you are familiar many people will call with that name same thing goes for your Oracle software as well. Many people will call it as a Oracle software or database software. With the help of that, many people will call it as a Oracle home and many people will call it as a database home. Oracle, this is the one single software, Oracle software or database software and with help of this Oracle software database software you are going to install Oracle home or people will call it as a short name OH Oracle home or database home so if you install this software database software Oracle software in a standalone it will be a standalone Oracle home if you install it in a rack cluster it will be a rack home or the rack oracle home 
So people will call it as a rack home or rack or rackle home because you install that software in a rack. So something like that. So it, these are like again one and same. Many people may call it with a different different name. So don't get confused. It's all they are referring to one. Right. Let's move on here. One of one of the common questions. I need to do two node rack setup. How many IPs are needed? So very first thing the lab one let's say this is node one dot this is the host name node one and node two for this host name very first thing i need is physical ips mandatorily in order to do a setup i need a physical ip for that server i have server one here i have server two here two linux server for that two linux server i need physical ip so these physical ips are must so that's the first thing how many ips are needed for two node rack setup so i need two physical ips that's a mandatory So next, after that, I need two VIPs for that particular servers. That's a must. This VIPs, I told you why. That is for your failover. Without with help of VIPs, we should be able to do a failover in case of rack. And this physical IPs, why we need? That physical IPs are needed for that particular Linux server. Any Linux server should be associated with the physical IPs so that it can be tagged to a network or the NIC card. Right, fair enough. So we got two physical IPs and two VIPs. So your lab is Oracle Lab One dot local domain dot com or any of your the client domain wipro.com, infosys.com, any of their domain. So I have two servers, lab one. And then lab two. So lab one will be having. Let's say I'll put it over here. Host name. And these two servers needs physical IPs. So let's say it's randomly I can take 192, 168, 1.101. So I need one more physical IP here. I'll go with 102. And next I need VIPs. So I'll go with the same IP range 192, 168, 1.103, 1.04. I need two VIPs for those two servers. For this VIPs, for the physical IPs, this is a name. Oracle Lab, I'll just put it over here. And for this VIPs, so we standard naming convention will go with hyphen VIP. You can go with whatever name you want it, but this is a standard name. Usually what we follow. Physical node, physical host name or the VIP host name, hyphen VIP. Right after the physical, after the no, two node VIPs, I need a private IPs for the node to node communication. And this is two more IPs. This private IPs plays very, very important. What I told is physical IPs are needed for those two physical server or the VIP virtual server, those will be tagged with the NIC. Any server runs with that physical IPs. And on top of that, we'll be having these two VIPs for the failover. And then we need two more IPs. That's the private IPs for node to node communication. But again, uh, there are many questions around that. Why we need a private IPs? 
for node to node communication for the node to disk communication that's called disk heartbeat and the network heartbeat and we have something called cache fusion so all will need the private ip the private interconnect private network so for that we need private ip so this private ip will be in a different network range right now your physical ip vip are on the same network range one dot series and your private ip should be on some different network i'll go with a randomly two dot series or three dot series you can go with whatever name so the standard naming convention for that will go with the priv private So it will be 2, 1 or 2 and lab 2, PRIB. Right, so the physical IP is mandatory for any Linux server to run with any of the NIC cards. And VIP is needed, as I mentioned here. For the failover, we need the VIP. And this private IP, again in simple definition, what's the use of private IP? Why we need a private IP? One of the common entry questions. Private IP is needed for network heartbeat disk heartbeat and cache fusion. So few examples. Network heartbeat meaning node to node communication. Node to disk communication. The disk meaning we have a voting disk. For there it want to do communication. So private IP needed. One of the common questions in interview. In interview, why we need a private IP? These are the three main tasks. We have other main tasks like your CSST communication, node eviction, and other things, but. Your answer should be in a simple, straightforward private IP or the private network is needed for your network heartbeat, disk heartbeat, and cache revision. Right. Once that is done, what else? What else IP we needed here? Let's go here again. When the private IP is done. Those are like three IPs on node one, three IPs on node two. Totally, we need a six IPs for two node rack setup. On top of that, we have scan IPs or the scan VIPs. People will call it as a scan IP or VIP. So for that scan, you can go with the one or two or three, one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or whatever you want how many scan ips you want you can go with whatever your convenient or your choice default is three so default scan ips will be recommendation is to have three you can go with even one two three four five doesn't matter i give an example here 192.168.1.105.106.107.3 IPs. So if you consider default as example, so totally we need three IPs from node one, three IPs from node two, and three scan. Totally I need a nine IPs to do a two node rack setup. So considering that if I want to do a three node rack setup, I just need three more IPs for that server. Physical IP, VIP, and private IP. If I want to add one more node here, again, I need three more IPs. Physical IPs, VIPs, and private IPs. That's how it continues. Right, so that is the IP requirement. Only the scan is a variable. Other than that, your node IPs, three minimum needed for your rack setup. Now let's say the other common questions is physical IP 
and VIP are in same network is physical IP and scan IP are in same network is VIP and scan are in same network right so those are your expected questions so by looking at this diagram here you will be able to understand physical ip one dot series vip one dot series and scan ip one dot series and if you see this green color all or should be in the same network that is the answer like you know my physical ip my vip my scan ip all should be in a same network same ip range and other networking question on that is scan a vip or a ip so we used to say scan ip or the scan vip some people will say scan ip or some people will say scan vip is a scan vip or the physical ip scan is always a vip similar to your node vip scan is always a vip so that's a human behavior like many time we say scan ip scan ip just to make it simple or the scan vip All right so that is your scan but only thing is private ip should be in different network other than physical or vip or scan ip Right, so your private IP should be in a different network other than physical IP or VIP and scan IP. Scan IP or any plug and scan IP. So you call it as a scan VIP or a scan IP. And the other point should be physical IP or the VIP or the scan IP or the scan VIP should be in same network. Only this private IP should be on the different network other than that everything should be in the same network that's what we made it i made it as a red color here and then remaining all in the green color so that green color is the public network we are publicly able to access a red color is the private network where which cannot be accessed outside of your domain which publicly cannot be accessed right that is your ip requirement and the associated the naming convention the standard naming convention what we define we'll work with the network admin in the real time world and then we'll give this okay this is my standard name what i want it we're not the one who is going to define these ips we'll just give these host names as a standard host name or we'll work with the linux admin and get the host name and will modify according to the standard names when these host names are ready then we'll work with the network admin and we'll ask him to assign these ips so my requirement is i need physical ip vip scan ip three for each node and three scan vips totally should be on the same network then your linux admin is going to preserve or network admin is going to preserve these ips in the network and we need to ask i need two private ips and that should be in a different network other than this whatever that public network what we assigned here all right that is ip requirement for my two node rack setup and then standard naming convention for different different ips and different different host names vips and the scan once that is done 
how the client connection works the client connection all will first goes to scan why a scan again scan we already told smart or intelligent enough here load balancing is done by scan scan is intelligent enough to route that connection let's say client one comes client one will go here client two comes client two will go here client three comes client three will go here and client four comes client four will go here right so those are your scan how that connection will be routed to both the nodes and the load will be balanced but there is questions why three scan let's go with only one scan ip client one comes the one single scan ip can route here client two comes one single ip is enough to route this we just need one ip for the scan but why oracle recommended or default set to three as a standard so we have something called again in actual class we're going to cover that one the question is why three scan ips why can't single ip for scan great so for this again as i told we'll go deep dive in our regular classes how this load balancing works here we can go with a single ip or multiple ips for scan no restriction you can go with one ip two ip three ip four ip but why three oracle is going to support so we have two concept the scan will support one is client connection high availability client or server side global load balancing so these are the two major task provided by scan already i told load balancing is one of the major task by scan and then why multiple ips for scan for this client connection high ability one ip is not available we have other ip in the scan to survive the incoming connection so that kind of a high ability for the client connection for that we need a multiple ips for the scan so that might be one of the expected questions why multiple ips are defined for the scan to support the incoming client connection if one of the scan ip is busy or not accessible the other scan ip will be take into picture and then support that incoming client connection and the other major activity or task by scan is load balancing routing that client connection to respected node to balance the load across the rack all right so that is for my total network architecture what is needed now quickly talk about few minutes about a gi grid infrastructure or asm or clusterware installation so i'll take a pause here for a minute if anyone has any questions so far on the networking side what i just covered or the ip address what i just covered and whatever this standalone versus rack difference what i covered like what is function of vip over here i just mentioned here right vip is for your failover without vip you will not be able to achieve this failover okay all right 
again so in real time example live demonstration once i show the demo once i shut down the node one then you will get to know how that failover occurs how that vip will be moved to other nodes all will be like in live real time demo then you will understand more on that but for now you have to assume that okay vip is for failover it happens but once you really see that in the demo then you will get to know that yeah that's uh, that's true Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, so actually, one question here. So you said that uh, for private uh, IP, we have to set up a different uh, on a different network, like two dot one zero one. Right. So like, suppose if we are setting on one dot one zero one, like, what will be the issues there? Why cannot we take? Uh, uh, yes, set your your setup. That's one of the Oracle itself checks. That's what I. You want you can go ahead and then set up this. Private IP in a physically in a realistic world. If you talk, your private IP you can put it in one dot series. Nobody is stopping you. You can put it into one dot series and you can do a setup. Everything should go. Everything should works fine. Why? Who is? Who are you to restrict me? It is my choice. I can put my private IP as a one dot series, as a simple layman term. If I talk, yes, even I can put one dot series. It should work fine, but. As a part of your installation, whatever I'm covering here, GI or ASM installation, that they put a check in their software. It's going to look for whether you have given this physical IP, VIP, and this private IP in a different network or not. Then only your installation will proceed further. The moment you give it as a one dot series, your installation will not proceed. But yes. in your answer to your question, yes, even you can put it in one. Ideally, it should work. Okay. But there is a caveat here. Why Oracle has strongly suggested to go with a different network? Because of these three reason here, where I mentioned. Okay, here. Private IP is needed for network heartbeat, the disk heartbeat, and the cache fusion. Meaning, the private network is so busy. This node will be communicating each other for every millisecond, microsecond. This node will be communicating to this disk every millisecond, microsecond, and the nodes will be transferring the data between this node one and node two. Your private network is so busy, and if you put this private network instead of one, instead of two, you put it as this one, and your public network will be overloaded. The any client is connected here, they will not be getting a proper bandwidth. Your End user client session will be the network will be throttled here. The client will face the slowness in their network if the private network is same as your client network. So that's the one of the idea behind why Oracle strongly suggests or stops you to use the same network. It has to be different network because the private network is heavily used, heavily overloaded. You don't mess up that private network with this public network. Where the client is connecting, and your client might be like traffic will be overloaded, right? Yeah, hey Malik sir, I found clarification that the network was. See, yep. I think as you mentioned, right, the three IP address for single uh, two node drive setup. So in this case, like uh, how many network network interface uh, do we need? Like uh, the same three or how is it? Network interface is only one. As I told here. You have a server, and for that server, we have this physical IP. Only the physical IP needs interface. Again, this is a good question. You may expect in the interview. Only the physical IP. What you see, those physical IPs need an interface. Other than that, your VIPs, they will not need a. Any network interface, right? Mm -hmm. So physical IP is the one which needs the interface, and your private IP is also a physical IP. So the moment you say physical IP. It needs interface. It needs interface. 
again if somebody who don't know about interface interface is nothing but if you do if config whatever you're seeing eth0 eth1 eth3 these are your interfaces or in some linux server you can see ensp ensp1 2 ensp3 so these are your interface if you do in network linux command form if config and then you will see all this interface so wherever you see physical ip you need a interface your physical ip the node ip or the physical ip or the private ip or the physical ip these are your physical ips in a rack setup so those physical ips need a interface so in this two node setup i need a two interface on node 1 i need a two interface on node 2 other than that your vip does not need your vip here does not need your scan ip scan ip is a vip that does not need all right okay thank you all right let's say quickly the setup the gi or asm or cluster wave installation how can i do that one right now let's say we are going to first step gi software download we are going to download gi software on node 1 and then unzip first step is we are going to download the gi software on node 1 after that we are going to unzip that gi software on node 1 and the third thing is after unzip we have something called dart slash grid setup There's a script grid setup.sh. We're going to run this one. The moment I run this grid setup, it's going to ask enter your node one details, enter your node two details, enter your node one VIP, enter your node two VIP, and enter your private IPs. The moment I run this grid setup, it's going to ask is enter node one, node two, your public IPs, private IPs, and VIPs, and the scan name. Once I enter it, it's going to set up my ASM on this node 1 and my cluster is set up on node 1. And then it's going to copy that cluster software or ASM software to node 2 and it's going to set up your second node. And then that's going to form your two node rack cluster. The grid infrastructure will be formed two node cluster. That's your a grid installation. In a simple word, it will be ends up with a three step. Download 19C GI software on node one only, only on node one. Unzip 19C GI software. Unzip 19C GI software and run dot slash grid setup dot sh the moment i do this run grid setup sh it will ask you to enter ips ips or vips once that is done what you know it will start asm on node one and copy software to node two and start asm2 that's a simple understanding three steps Download GI software, unzip that on node one, run that grid setup, and then it'll gonna ask you to enter the IPs. You enter the IPs and you're gonna copy that software to your node two and it's gonna start your ASM one and ASM two. A simple definition. But in real time, realistic world, if you start with the installation, you will see a lot of challenges or issues. Once that is done, then we'll go with the database creation. So we'll do the same three step. 
will download 19c database software and will unzip into node 1 and will run the run installer and you're going to copy that software to second node but that is your second step gi inclusion and the second one is oracle home or database home rack home inflation so if we need to install your oracle home first it'll, it'll be same step download 19c it's not a gi it's a oracle home software or database software on node one after that unzip your oracle home or database software and run it's not a grid setup here it's a run installer it will not ask you to enter this home details because already it is formed here two node rack cluster node one and node two is already formed it will show all the rack nodes and all are selected so it's going to show node one selected node two selected node two selected let's say you have four node rack cluster you download a db software here you run this run installer and it's going to show you all the rack node one node two node three node four in front of that it will be checkbox like this meaning i want to install this database software and all these four node if you uncheck this two meaning i don't want to install rack software database software on this node two i want to install that on only one and two you have to verify it it will show it will show all rack nodes and all are selected so all four node rack it will be selected all four node and if you proceed further your oracle home will be installed on all four node if you uncheck any of the node your oracle home will not install there it will install it only three node rack or three node oracle home or two node oracle home right so it will show all the rack nodes and all are selected and then it will set up node one oracle home and copy oracle home to other nodes your oracle home is ready we'll first copy that set up oracle home on node one later we'll copy to other nodes and your oracle home is ready on all the cluster nodes and now rack db creation So rack db creation is like you are going to go into that node one so now here asm is ready and after that you have oracle home is ready oracle home is ready and now you're going to create this database give me a second guys sorry guys okay now a database creation rack database creation so this ideally gi home the location u01 standard name app 19c grid on node 1 this is the path and node 2 also this will be the path here in this location you will be installing the grid software here in this location you will be installing the grid software and oracle home u01 app oracle product 19c db home underscore one so node one software will be installed here and then node two also your software location remains same and once that is done your oracle home installation is simple you will be going to node one from node one run dbca from 
Oracle home slash bin location. So we'll go CD into Oracle home slash bin and we'll run DBCA. The moment I run this DBCA, it's going to launch GUI screen. And then it's going to ask you what all the, what's your database name, where you want to store and all. Once you run this one, it's not going to ask you what all nodes you want to create your database. Let's say your Oracle Home, whatever you installed here, you installed Oracle Home on four nodes. And automatically your database will be created on four nodes. Database instance will be created on four nodes. If you install this Oracle Home on only this two node, when you run this DBC and create database, only your database instance will be running on this two node. Based upon Oracle Home, how you set up, whether you set up Oracle Home on two node, Oracle Home on three node, Oracle Home on four node, based upon that your rack database instance will be get started on two node or three node or four node. So very, very careful on installation of Oracle Home. What is your intention? You want to create Oracle Home on all the React nodes or only two of the React nodes. If you create a two of the React node, your database instance will be created on only two nodes. If you created Oracle instance, Oracle Home on four nodes, your database will be created on all four nodes. Right. So the, the intention is many, many of customer will go with the, even though it's a four node rack, they will install Oracle Home on these two nodes and they install separate Oracle Home on these two nodes. They will create a dev databases over here and they will create a test databases over here. Right? This is your Oracle Home 1 and this is your Oracle Home 2. Dev and test. And you can go ahead and then create your Oracle Home on four nodes here. And you can create your UAT. So this UAT will be running on all the four nodes. Your dev will be running on only one and two. Your test will be running on three and four. Any combination you can do it. Everything is possible or supported in, in React here. All right, that's what 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 we see here. Two ASM1 and ASM2, DevDB1 and DevDB2. That's your database instance. All right, so that's about the installation and configuration, how you can do it, track along with the networking. Right. I'll take a pause here. I, I'll not be continuing further. We are almost reaching end of the session. So let's take a wrap it up for today's session. We'll continue tomorrow for with the rack startup sequence. What are the rack startup sequence? How can I bounce my cluster where? How can I bounce my database? And I can show you all this IP, whatever I defined. I'll log into one of my rack setup and I'll show this, this physical interface, all these VIPs, virtual IPs, how it look like and host name, how it look like and database GI home and Oracle home and database instance, how they look like. And along with that, we'll show one or two demonstration like shutting down my cluster, how my rack is cluster where startup look like and my database file system structure. Where are my database files? My SP file, P file, password file, control file, read log files, archive log files, my system data files, system data files, undo data file, temp data file, where are they located? And then followed by we will see OLR, OCR. OLR is Oracle local registry, OCR is your Oracle cluster registry, and Old disks. So these are your cluster resources, OLR, OCR, and Word disk, and how this plays very very important role in my rack cluster where a rack cluster setup. And then we'll try to complete these three topics and see if time consumes or time left out. We'll see further more on some tools, some networking command we have it. OLS nodes, OCR config, and OCR check, OCR dump, and CRCTL, SRUCTL, and we'll play around that if time permits. But yeah, tomorrow we'll try to cover these three topics, and if any questions, queries, we'll take it up tomorrow. All right. So any last questions or queries anyone has it before we wrap it for for today? All right. 
So I'll take it as a no. So again, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, if you want to enroll and continue with this course or uh, oh, only the one question I have, like, can you just explain those uh, two dev babies as one cluster you have taken that? Can you just explain again? What I mean, your database home installation matters, how you install your Oracle home here. So you installed your Oracle home on all four nodes. Your database will be get started on all four nodes. Let's say I have four node rack cluster. So I install my Oracle home only on these two nodes here. Whatever this Oracle home you're going to install, I'm going to install my Oracle home on only node one and two. I can go ahead and then install my Oracle home two only on this node three and four. I can go ahead and install my separate Oracle home on all this node one, two, three, four. So based upon where you install your Oracle home, your database will get started. Here, DevDB instance one will start and here DevDB instance will start. If you create a DevDB database, it will be two node DevDB database. It's a two node rack database. Even though it's a four node rack cluster, your database is a two node rack because your Oracle home is installed it on only two nodes. And again, I installed Oracle home separately on this third and fourth. If I create test database, it will be two node test database, two node rack database. Even though my cluster is a four node, it's a two node test database. I installed Oracle Home 3 separately on all the four nodes. If I create my UAT database, UAT instance one, two, UAT instance three, UAT instance four, it's a four node rack database. My cluster is four node. That's a mismatch. You can have your cluster node, any number of nodes, and your database also you can create any number of database, rack cluster database. Two node rack database, three node rack database, four node rack database, based upon how you installed your Oracle home. All right. So uh, we can have both uh, 12C or 19C or even 21C, uh, 23I all together in the same node, like or in multiple nodes. Right. You can do that one. So what matters is your. ASM should be higher version. So you have, let's say, two node rack here. I create my ASM or clusterware. Let's say I install 21C. After installing 21C, you can create your Oracle home one with a 21C. I can create my Oracle home two with a 19C. I can create Oracle home which is of 18C. Your Oracle home should be lesser than your ASM home or maximum equal to your ASM home. I cannot create Oracle home 4 with a 23C. That's not supported. Your ASM should be higher version or your database can go up to ASM version. So there is a caveat. Again, further advanced question. Right now I have 21C ASM. 21C Oracle Home. You can apply any patch here. There's no dependency on the patch. Again, we'll cover in patching session in detail, but in simple answer to your question, your ASM should be higher version. All your database should be lower version or your database can reach up to ASM version. All right. So there are one or two question in the rack here. Uh, any basics for DBA classes? As I told, uh, we have separate classes for the DBA. So you can reach out to me. I can guide you that process. You can enroll for that. So in this rack, we'll not be covering anything DBA basics. So there's one more question. Can client connect directly on VIP? Client can directly connect to good question. Client can directly connect to VIP, client can directly connect to physical IP, client can directly connect to scan and connect to server. So all are possible, but if the client directly connect to physical IP, will not be able to do a failover. If the physical IP node goes down, failover is not possible. Client can directly connect to VIP. Yes, they can connect. And if the node goes down, 
automatically his sessions will be failed over failure is possible but the drawback or the issue with the client connecting to vip let's say i have thousand users all the thousand users can connect to vip node one enter this thousand users will be connected to node one your node two is idle your node two is not doing anything you will not be able to get a proper load balancing if the client started connecting to vip directly right that's where you know we don't insist customer we are not going to share with the client any of the physical ip any of the vip we always share scan ip with the client so that client has to always connect via scan once they connect with the scan we should be able to get a proper load balancing right to simple answer to your question abdul client can connect anyway all are possible all right let's take a break now um, we'll connect tomorrow and then continue further discussion on the remaining topic whatever i mentioned here right let's take a break guys happy weekend thank you thank you yeah thank you thanks medic bye thank you all bye